The question is the motion Absolutely. be agreed. I give the call to the Honourable uh, Colm again, and I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> Famous last words. Thank you, Acting President. And in the words of the amazing Bruce Buffer, it's time for nine amazing minutes from the member for Mining and Pastoral on UFC 284, Perth, Western <laughs> Australia. That was, uh, that was my attempt at uh, Bruce Buffer, but uh, probably not the best. But uh, I will say that uh, I'm very excited to get up and talk about the UFC 284 that took place um, on the weekend. It was uh, a phenomenal week. Uh, it's been a phenomenal build-up. Uh, members have mentioned some of the figures that have come out of it, but just all the add-ons that we got from Western Australia. The CBD last week was alive. There was over 9,000 people that come from interstate for this event. This event was promised to us uh, a few years ago, um, but during COVID, obviously, that was put off, and the UFC honoured that commitment to come back to Perth, which I thought was amazing. I went to UFC 221, which was the first one held here after the McGowan government um, did, did the amazing effort of uh, legalising uh, the octagon here in Western Australia, which was one of the best decisions to see a government go out and do because it is a sport, it is respectful, there is professionalism. I know some people uh, look down upon uh, ultimate fighting, but I will say that I've been supporting it since I was a kid. And it, it comes with respect, professionalism, and the UFC itself is an organisation that uh, is just a well-oiled machine. Uh, when they put on an event, they put it on. Uh, we've seen um, the main event was Alexander the Great Volkanovsky, who is the featherweight champion of the world uh, from Sydney, Australia. And this was the first time uh, since holding the belt that he was able to fight here in Australia. And I will say the support for him was unbelievable. I know my colleague, who is also a huge UFC fan, the Honourable Matthew Swinburne, was very, uh, very... You'd be very surprised that there are UFC fans that have law degrees. <laughs> um, so there, there are people with law degrees that support ultimate fighting, unbelievably. Um, but, uh, but, but what we've seen also on that card was just a stacked Australian fighter card. Um, one of my favourite fighters, Jimmy Crute, uh, he came out uh, and was on a losing streak and come into a fight and was an absolute warrior. Went three rounds um, and it ended up being a, a majority draw, which is very rare to see in the UFC, but the heart that was shown was unbelievable. Uh, a name that I'm sure everyone in this room is now aware of uh, because it was screamed for over two weeks, Jack Della Maddalena is a Perth fighter, the first to get into the UFC and fight on home soil here in uh, Perth. He... Uh, he took the fight all of uh, half a round uh, and won his uh, fourth uh, fight in the UFC in the first round in a row. Uh, he is set to be a future champion uh, of the UFC and he's come right here from Perth. And I know that he's fought his way up through Eternal and all the uh, awesome organisations that um, put fighters onto a pedestal to try and get them into the UFC. It is no easy feat. The UFC is seen as the best fighters in the world. And our man, Jack Della Maddalena, went out there and wiped the floor uh, with Randy from uh, America, who was getting very lippy at the media conference. Um, and I'm sure he's eating his words on his plane ride back to America now. Um, so we also had Josh Cabillo, who uh, had a huge comeback in his fight. Uh, he was uh, unfortunately hit with a low blow during the fight, uh, which was a direct side kick into the uh, nether regions and uh, was in a world of pain, uh, but came back and got a submission and won that fight. It was unbelievable. The atmosphere in RAC was something that I don't think could be matched. I've, I've been to State of Origin uh, at Optus Stadium, but the atmosphere in RAC with a packed house, um, especially when uh, Volkanovski walked out to a very Aussie song, uh, the crowd was going absolutely ballistic. And when Jack Maddalena won, uh, the crowd was uh, really about to boil over. But again, all the build-up was around that there would be problems and that UFC fans are uh, reckless and that there could be fights and everything else. I can't stress enough, that was the same build-up to UFC 221, but nothing happened. Um, and I can tell you again that the crowd was unreal. They walked out uh, after the event, there was no issues, there was plenty of police around, um, but everyone was really respectful. The, the event, uh, as said earlier, was the highest grossing arena event in Australian history. That is unbelievable. 
there was 6,000 6, people attended the weigh-ins, the ceremonial weigh-ins. 6,000 people also attended the uh, media conference. Yes, I was there, and yes, I was fanboying really hard. Um, it was unreal. The atmosphere for the whole week was unbelievable. We had fighters from around Australia who weren't fighting. We had Rob the Reaper Whitaker. We had Dan the Hangman Hooker. We had Kaikara France, Bam Bam Tights of Asa, uh, Israel Adesanya. Uh, we even had Ragnar Lothbrook here. Believe it or not, Ragnar Lothbrook. Uh, Travis Fimmel was here, uh, the actor out of Vikings. Uh, he was spotted in the crowd. Um, I see the opposition leader go, whoa, there's Vikings in Perth. <laughs> oh, excellent. Um, one of the, uh, one of the uh, other great fights that I got to watch was Justin Tuffer, uh, heavyweight. Two heavyweights come out. I think it lasted two minutes. Um, but Justin Tuffer did a walk-off KO, which was uh, unbelievable. So fans were really treated. There was over 9,000 interstate visit visitors, uh, and it was televised in 172 countries, and millions of people watched. Millions of people watched a build-up, um, the, the Tourism WA, uh, Venues West, and everyone helped out with, uh, there's a series called Embedded that they do before each fight. And it shows the fighters getting around Perth and where they go, and uh, they go to the crowd events, like the open workouts. There were thousands of people down at the quay watching the, uh, the uh, open workouts. I don't think they've ever seen um, a crowd so engaged in going to these events. But uh, we also seen it bring along some celebrities. Um, with massive Instagram, uh, YouTube, Snapchat followers, which is what we're after, to bring people from around the world to this beautiful place in Western Australia. Uh, so Logan Paul, KSI, um, I know members in this place probably look at me blankly when I say these names, but very influential uh, YouTubers and uh, podcasters um, have, uh, have always uh, been... I know that uh, my friend Amy Astle out in Kalgoorlie was ecstatic, not for the UFC, just because Logan Paul and KSI were here. Um, so people travelled here just to try and get a glimpse of these people. Uh, another fellow that Logan Paul does his uh, podcast with, Mike Maj Majlak, he stayed at Crown Towers, and you follow his Snapchat, and he went to restaurants and he rated all the food, because what he does is he rates burgers and he rates food to his millions of followers. And he was rating 10 out of 10 at all these places he went to uh, within Perth. And he arrived in Sydney and he said he missed Perth already. So um, it was really good to see that. That was uh, phenomenal. Um, but uh, but uh, just a huge shout out to the crowd and to the supporters of UFC. The McGowan government believed that it was the right thing to do in 2017. We've had two major events under this government. Um, and, you know, Perth, uh, fights above its weight constantly to try and get sporting events from the East Coast. Um, I could, uh, I'd just get furious when I talk about the cricket in respect of the games we miss out on. Um, I think it's just uh, it's insulting. Uh, we have one of the best stadiums, the best stadium in Australia, and uh, you've seen what happened up in Brisbane with their pitch. You see what happened with their pitch. You've seen the Sydney, the Sydney event uh, gets washed out almost every single year, but they still don't move it to Perth. It's absolutely insulting. And who won the World Cup for Australia in the 2020 series? Mitch Marsh won the World Cup. And where did he come from? Perth, Western Australia. So let's not forget about that. Um, just to touch on a couple of things, uh, the solar eclipse that's coming up in Exmouth, thousands and thousands of people from around West, uh, the world will be coming to uh, Exmouth to see about 60 to 70 seconds of an eclipse, but they will be travelling right up, um, uh, and the Honourable Steve Thomas, in respect to getting people out of Perth, the eclipse is one of those events where they'll be travelling from Perth all the way to Exmouth, potentially on to Karajini, um, further up north to Broome, Onslow. There's going to be just massive add-ons out of that. Um, and for Kalgoorlie, the Honourable Peter Collier, who's on urgent parliamentary business, Kalgoorlie's got a lot to offer as well. I, I know coming in 2017, there was an event created called the Desert Race. And the desert race is now massive. It's literally thousands of people come from all over Australia to race in the desert, in Kalgoorlie, bikes, cars, trucks. Um, it, it's very reminiscent to the Fink race uh, in the middle of Australia. And I think it's only getting bigger and bigger. But on the final note, had an amazing event. UFC was unbelievable. Uh, thank you, uh, Mark McGowan. Thank you to uh, the Labor Party for seeing the value in uh, legalising uh, the Octagon in Western Australia. And to the UFC, thank you for coming to Perth. And to Alexander the Great Volkanovsky, you got robbed, mate. You won that fight. Um, Islam Machayev, uh, unfortunately, you lost your belt. You're not the greatest in the world. 
still pound for pound, number one, Alexander the Great Volkanovsky.